The weather's getting nice and we're gonna need more quads. Today we're taking a look at this D215 made by Real ACC. This is what the frame looks like. This is the back of it where the video transmitter antenna goes and the front is the taller part. And this is strongly modeled after the D Quad Obsession 210. And it looks like this. Now there are some differences that make these not so much a clone, rather as just more like copied. And I'll show you a couple of those differences. And one thing that's kind of funny about this is this is actually called the D215, but the box itself says D210. <laughs> so here are all the parts that are included. Of course you get the four arms and the top and bottom plates. Now these are detachable arms, so it's not a unibody main plate. And I've kind of grown fond of the unibodies just because I've had a hard time breaking anything that's four millimeters thick. It also has these camera mounts and they're kind of unique in the fact that they're rounded because of the round aluminum pieces which are really the star of this quad because there aren't very many frames that have aluminum pieces like this yet. I'm sure if this turns out to be real successful we'll start seeing more and more of them. Also has a bottom protector plate for your LiPo battery and this is the antenna holder for your video transmitter antenna goes across the back of the frame. Some spacers and some screws and some nylon spacers and of course you get the, the uh, kind of standard Montec power distribution board that Real ACC includes in a lot of their kits. This has a 5 volt and 12 volt output and a battery strap. So here's the frame fully assembled and this actually is pretty unique compared to a lot of other frames that I've looked at. Some of the things I like about this frame right off the bat are this little uh, carbon fiber piece back here to hold your video transmitter antenna. I think this is gonna be excellent, especially if you're using an extension that goes over to your video transmitter, if you're mounting it up on one of like the one that's the same size as your flight board, or if you have to mount it up here somewhere, I'm not really sure how you do that, but it does have these holes that are cut in here for uh, zip ties that you could use for zip ties or whatever else to hold it, uh, stuff in there. You could also, I think, I believe it has these holes here for a 3D printed GoPro mount that you can print off of the uh, D Quad Obsession website. And maybe it would fit in here. I haven't printed one of those off to see. But uh, it has these uh, camera mount sides up here, which make it nice for mounting your camera. It has a black spacer back here that goes between the two carbon fiber pieces and the little silver ones that go up here between the two silver pieces. Now these down here, this goes right through the round holes that were in the aluminum piece. This one up here does not. It goes in these little slider things, and so it could like it could slide forward and backward or something, which doesn't make much sense. They should have just had a round hole up there instead of the little, you know, slider piece. But whatever, I don't know. So now, like I was saying, this is a little different than the D Quad Obsession. The D Quad Obsession has a lot different looking arms than this. The ends of it are a little bit more pointy, and I don't think they're cut out for the 1806 motors like this little this little uh, piece right here, up and down, left and right. It just has the holes, which are made for your 2200 size motors. Uh, so you can't. You won't be able to fly. I don't think you can use the 1806 motors on the D Quad, but you could on this one. But I don't know why you would because they're kind of weak for a frame this big. They'll work, but they're just kind of weak compared to 2200 size motors. Also, on the D Quad Obsession website, they have a few three different 3D printed pieces you can get. And here's one that's designed to hold your XT60 connector. Uh, now, on the D Quad Obsession, this would fit right in between these two plates like this, and you put your XT60 connector inside and it sits back underneath like that. But on here you can see these plates are too far apart, or too narrow for this thing to fit in there. Now if you wanted to, you could grind out some of this carbon fiber here on both sides, and then it would fit because it fits in here between the aluminum pieces just fine. It's just that those carbon, with that carbon fiber sticking out a little bit too far, it can't fit down there below. Now the biggest complaint I have about this frame is that all the screws are too short, except for these arm screws. There's one here that holds the arm on, then there's one more right, let's see if I can get a blurred shot, right there that goes through the bottom plate, through the arm, through the top plate, and then goes into a nylon spacer. So really, I'm not a big fan of running uh, arm supporting mounts into the flight board holder like that, but I guess it would work as long as you have this one pretty tight. Uh, it, sh it should be okay, because I don't know, I don't think there's going to be a lot of pressure pulling these plates apart. And, and you do end up with four, uh, four screws and four nuts holding the two plates together. Back here in the back, you have these screws that go from here into through the plate up into the aluminum piece. Now these here, these uh, screws here, they're six millimeters thick. Well, you got four millimeters inside this plate, 
So you only got two millimeters of thread going into this aluminum spacer. So instead of only six millimeters, these really need to be eight millimeters so you can get a good amount of threads into here because when you crash, these four screws, those two here and the two up here in the front, they're gonna be what's holding down the aluminum piece to the frame. And you, you, with only two millimeters of threads, that's really not enough. So instead of six, it needs eight millimeter screws. And the reason you see one missing there is because I actually pulled it out and I was measuring it. Now, also up here on these screws, these screws here are uh, eight millimeters. And you got about four or five millimeters through here. And then you got this uh, carbon fiber piece so you're barely getting any threads actually into the spacers. And when I was tightening these up, they just started spinning. I see I'm, not, I'm here, I'm, it's just spinning because you can feel it grab a little bit of thread, but not enough to actually get a hold of anything to uh, grab on. And I'll show you this. Oop, there's the screw itself. Well, I just dropped it, but here's the other screw. It's the same length. If you put it up here, you can see there's not a lot of thread that actually gets through I'm just gonna get it on there, right? That there's not a lot of thread actually gets through into the spacer. So even though these are eight millimeters, they're just not long enough. You need ten millimeter spacers. So if you're looking to buy this frame, you need to pick up an extra set of uh, ten millimeter spacers. And you can take these screws that came up here that are eight mm ten millimeter screws, not spacers. You can take these eight millimeter screws that came here and put them down through this piece into the aluminum, and that'll give this plenty of strength to uh, hold the aluminum down, but you need to pick up at least four more 10 millimeter screws, and they're M3s, uh, M3 10 millimeter screws to go into this carbon fiber, into the spacer, or in through the aluminum, and then into the spacer, just so that it has enough strength for it. We'll go to get some measurements off of this frame. This arm here is about 3.99, 3.86, uh, they're pretty close. 4.4, that's not bad. 3.93. They're all pretty close. And these uh, aluminum places pieces here, they're about five millimeters thick. And on the diameter side here, let's see the or the width side, about eight millimeters. So that's gonna this is should be plenty of strength to hold this quad up in the air. And I bet it'll be way stronger than the uh, aluminum spacers with carbon fiber. But like I was saying before, with five millimeters here and another one millimeter here on this side plate, you only have about two millimeters to actually make it back into the uh, spacer itself. So it's just really not long enough screws. All right, let me get this thing on the scale. Even though all the screws aren't really holding in place, I do have them all in place now, just sitting there. And I have the XT60 connector on here so we can see how much this comes in at. It comes in about 142.143 grams, 143.2 grams. Now that is a surprisingly heavy frame, especially since the website says that this frame should weigh 110 grams. So it's a little bit off. Now granted they may not have counted the power distribution board, they may not have counted the battery strap and the, and the battery plate down below, but 140, 110 to 140 is a pretty dramatic difference in weight. We'll get a couple more measurements off of this. Uh, I got the kind of centered up around that center of the motor hole if I come over here you can see it comes in wow it's about 215 exactly so calling this a D215 is actually correct now I didn't measure this a little bit ago on the height of this because like I said it seems kinda high and it actually comes in about uh, 67 millimeters and here I just kinda show you kinda close so you can kinda see it's about 67 millimeters height up to here so this is a really tall frame for, uh, for, the, for a 210. Here's a six inch prop and you can see this thing is not going to clear. You, you won't be able to run six inch props on here. But here's a five inch prop and this one spins past the frame just fine. Even at the higher up here, it'll still spin past it just fine. You shouldn't have any problem with five inch props. Overall, this isn't a bad frame. I think this aluminum piece up here is gonna give a lot of strength to the whole frame itself, and it's gonna save a lot of, elect of your electronics and crashes. Like I said, the only thing kind of downsides I have to this are the screws are too short, and uh, also I'm not a big fan of the uh, individual arms instead of a unibody. Like I was saying before, you only have one real screw in here that helps hold the arm in place. And even if in here, if I take this and I just move it a little bit, you can kind of see the arm already moving. Now granted, this nut's not as tight as it could be, but the fact that it's allowed to even move this much is not real exciting to me. 
I'd rather have this whole these arms all four arms be connected together and have just some of the material cut out inside here and that would provide a lot more strength another thing is since the arms don't actually touch each other they're not getting strength off of each other either not side to side and also or front yeah side to side or front to back they don't actually touch each other so all your strength is coming from these two top and bottom plates some people I guess don't care me I'd rather have an x210 shape where it's all unibody anyway real ACC from uh, Sorry, the D210 from Real ACC. If you have any questions about this, leave me in the comments. I will try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.